Hey guys, this is Steven here with another video on how to play some of my favorite puzzles. This one is on Thermo Sudokus. It's a fun little variant on your original Sudoku type puzzle. And I've downloaded the app from Cracking the Cryptic on the App Store for $5. I definitely recommend checking out all of their apps and their YouTube channel as I think they're all fantastic. Anyways, how the rules work is as follows. Just like in regular Sudoku, each row, column, and 3x3 three three box must contain the digits 1 through 9 without repeating. In this variant, you have added clues indicated here by these drawn thermometers. And what they are are uh, digits that increase from the bulb to the tip. Now, it can be any digits along here. It doesn't have to be sequential. But whatever digit is on the bulb has to be lower than the digit at the tip and the ones in the middle. So it could be one, two, three, four, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It could be one, five, seven, nine. It could be three, five, seven, nine. Uh, but the lowest number is going to always be at the bulb and the largest number is always going to be at the tip. What I'm going to go ahead and do is try to solve this puzzle a little bit just so you can kind of see some of the tips and tricks and how this unravels and hopefully it'll help you solve some of your own. Now the first thing to consider is that a one must be uh, at the bulb if it's anywhere at all. Now a one doesn't have to be on the thermometer but if it is it has to be at the bulb. You can't have a one anywhere in the middle or at the tip because there's no digit lower than a one. So that's helpful to know because if we look at this one in uh, normal Sudoku rules, you know this uh, lower box, if we look at this box here, a one can't be here. But because of the thermometers, you know it also can't be any of those. Now it could be on the bulb and obviously it could be at the one uh, cell above it. So it could be either of these. Uh, but that's helpful to know. And the 9 is the exact opposite. A 9, if it's anywhere on the thermometer, it has to be at the tips. Uh, because if you have it here in the middle, there's no number larger than 9 that you can put after it. So that's helpful to know because if we look at this 9, in regular Sudoku rules, if we're looking at this bottom box, the 9 couldn't be here. Um, actually, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. That's not a good example. Let's look at this 9. So in normal Sudoku rules, it wouldn't be any of those three box in this three by three. But we also know that it's not any of these other ones because you can't have a nine in the middle. So we know the nine would have to go here. So you can see how that could help. What I try to do in these is I try to find the upper and lower bounds or the highest and lowest possible digits in each cell within a thermometer. And that's really helpful and the easiest way to do that is if you put a one in at the bulb and just go up in sequential order two three four five six seven those are all the lowest possible digits that could go into those thermometer cells ignoring all the other numbers on the grid just looking at the thermometer for now and then we do the exact opposite to find the highest possible digits we start out the tip with a nine and go in descending order, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So those are the highest possible digits that could exist on the thermometer. And then you can fill in the gaps. Uh, here a two uh, would be between the one and the three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Now you don't always have to fill them all in like that, but I'm doing this for illustrative purposes. And it is helpful to know. And then I can do the same up here. We'll do it backwards. So looking for the highest possible digit, we know we can start with the nine and go down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And then we can go backwards to find the lowest possible digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then fill in the gaps for all the other possible numbers. And you can kind of see a pattern here. And then from there, you can kind of use normal Sudoku rules uh, to eliminate some. So if we look at this one, two, three, we know we can eliminate the two because there's already a two in that column. So it's just now one, three. And same thing with this three, there's already a three in that column. 
uh, three, four, five, all of those work, four, five, six. The six is already in this three by three, so we could actually eliminate the six from both of those. Six, seven, eight is fine, seven, eight, nine is fine. Uh, and then up here we look, one, two, three is fine. Those are looking good. Now here is interesting, we already have a three and a four. So we know it's not a three or four, that leaves us only with the five. And now, because we know all the numbers up here have to be greater than five, this can't be a four. This has to be a six. And now we can fill in the rest because uh, all the numbers have to be larger. Now it doesn't have to be in sequential order uh, if, if this were say like a two or four, but because there's not enough space, you could see five, six, seven, eight, nine, the nine is on the tip, there would be no other space for any other uh, digits. So that works very nicely. And that has now removed the six and the five from this cell, leaving just the seven. And we could do the same thing. This can't be a six because that's lower than a seven. So that must be an eight and that must be a nine. So that is a, a good picture of how Thermo Sudoku works. What I would say is it does help to have different kinds of notation. What I do for thermometer notes is I use uh, notes smack in the middle. Whereas if I were to do normal Sudoku type notes, I would put them in the corners. So for instance, if we look at, uh, this is a triple here. Uh, there's only three digits missing out of the nine and we can see it's, uh, we already have one, two, three, four, we're missing a five, six, and an eight. So we can, what I would do is use corner notations uh, for normal Sudoku uh, hints. Now we know the five's not here and the six is not there, so that leaves just eight, which is nice. We know the six is not there, so that's gotta be a five, that's a six. So that's helpful. Um, let's see if I can keep going here a little bit. That elim This five eliminated, um, there was a six and a five here that got eliminated, so that's just a four. This here can't be a five because that would be greater than four. So this has to be three, two, one. And so you can see the digits get larger as you go towards the tip, but it doesn't have to be in sequential order, right? Here, it went from four to seven, so it skipped some numbers, but you have to always know that the number has to get larger as you go towards the tip, and the, the smallest digit always is in the bulb. Um, here we're still kind of stuck on those two, so that doesn't really help. Um, what I would do at this point is probably use standard Sudoku strategies uh, you know, first scanning and then looking for pairs, uh, naked singles, X-wings, all that fun stuff um, to solve a, a good chunk of this. Now, uh, just for, for illustrative purposes, we'll do the upper and lower bounds here again uh, with this. But we know a one can't go in that bulb, so a two is actually the lowest possible digit there. Uh, and then we would go three, but we know there's already a three down here. So that now is a four as the next lowest digit. Uh, here's a five, and then six is down here, so seven. So those are all the lowest possible digits that could be found. And now we'll do the opposite to see the highest possible digits. So this can't be a nine, because there's already a nine there. Can't be an eight, because there's already an eight there. So we actually know that it's a seven. And then if we see, maybe this is a six, six or a five, so we could put a six there. And then this, could this be a five or a four? Could be, so five or a four. Actually, you know what, there's already a five in this row. So these can't be fives. So that's actually a six. That's a four. And could this be a three? Uh, I think so. So that's helpful. And we'll do the same here. 
So this could be, uh, I think, a one with a possible, yeah, one, two, well, can't be a three for the next one, can't be a four, so five would be the lowest possible digit, and then six, I think a six. So these are the lowest possible digits, and then we'll go backwards for the highest possible digits. Can't be a nine, can't be an eight, so seven, uh, seven, six, six, five, can't be a five, can't be a four, can't be a three, so that has to be a two. And that has to be a one because there it's the ones the only digit less than a two so that's helpful so there we've pretty much done most of the thermometers and now it's just regular sudoku so i'll go about this just a little bit longer just so you can see but uh, i don't think i'll finish it just for the sake of time so we know one's got to be up here so we can pencil mark those in uh, we know a one's got to be one of these two because a one's already in those um, columns and we know those three by three boxes but there's a one already down here so if we look at these two can't be that one therefore that's the one now we know one's over here because there's a one in those two rows um, what else can we do a one can't be here so one's gotta be here but actually there's a one already in that column so that's a one. And now these are ones, because if we look at row three and row one, so these are ones, but this can't be a one. So actually the ones are just here. And now we can see down uh, these two rows, oops, if I could highlight it, the ones are pushed to that end. So on box three, the ones over here, and box six, the ones over there. So this can't be a one. So that has to be. All right. I, you know what? I'm not going to go any further. I think uh, by this point, you guys know how regular Sudoku works. Um, I was really just here to show you guys how the thermometers work. If you don't already know how regular Sudoku works or feel still a little uncomfortable with them, I would recommend... Uh, getting more proficient at the regular Sudokus first because any variant typically is going to be a little bit harder because they're going to utilize multiple kinds of logic. Um, but if you are you know, bored of regular Sudoku, I definitely recommend giving these a shot. Um, I would say these are one of my more favorite variants out there. So if you liked what you saw, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.